And um, let's see what Cicero is. C-I-C-E-R-O. It says Marcus Tullius Cicero. Uh, January 3rd, 106 BC, December 7th, 43 BC. Sometimes anglicized as Tully. You look at the word anglicized on, on MerriamWebsterDictionary.com. It says to make English in quality or characteristics. To adapt a foreign word, name, or phrase to English usage. So it says, or to alter a, to a characteristic English form or spelling to convert a name to its English equivalent. So um, Marcus Tullius Cicero, sometimes anglicized as Tully, was a Roman philosopher, politician, lawyer, orator, political theorist, consul, con um, constitutionalist. He came from a wealthy municipal family of the Roman equestrian order and is widely considered one of Rome's greatest orators and prose stylists. And this is back on our website, praxeology.net. This is what Cicero spake, spake of. And, um, it says, um, a summary of Stoic doctrine. This is Cicero, 106 BC to 43 BC, on the nature of the gods. Chrysippus, Chrysippus the Stoic says that the divine power resides in reason and in the mind and intellect of, the, of, of universal nature. He says that God is the universe itself. In the universe to pervasive that just that's just sound like five percentage, man. That sounds just like five percentage, man. He says that God is the universe itself and the universal per pervasiveness of its mind. Also that God is the governing principle of the universe, since he is located in, the, in intellect and reason, that he is the common nature of things, universal and all embracing, also the force of fate, the necessity of future events and fire. He says that God is the universe itself, which sounds just like some five percent of bullshit, and the universal pervasiveness, pervasiveness of his mind. Also that God is the governing principle of the universe, since he is located in intellect and, re and reason, that he is the common nature of things, universal and all embracing, also the force of fate, the necessity of future events and fire. Uh, here's another web page that we have here. Is um, called Philosophy After Dark, right? It said the Stoics and Epicureans on the soul. I'm just going to jump right to the, the Stoic view. we hit the Epicurean view another time. It says the Stoics' view was different in a few ways. They believed that the soul or pneuma was the animating force of bodies. It, it consisted of two of the four elements recognized by the Stoics, fire and air. The other two being uh, water and earth. These were the active principles of the Stoic physics, distinguished from the passive ones which were water and earth. See? They assumed it was so because when animals die, their bodies get cold and they cease to breathe. So the bodies must have been sustained by warmth and breath. That's why Numa is known as um, a fiery breath. Okay? That's why Numa is known as what? The fiery breath. Because um, fire brings what? Fire brings, mo brings warmth, right? So if fire brings warmth, then breath would have to be what? Air. So they said fiery breath because they said they believe, said when animals die the bodies turn cold so that breath came out of them. In other words, that fire left them because the body turned cold, but then the air left them of them as well because that's the breath. That's what fiery breath. You get it? Breath is the air, fire is the warmth in the body. Um, going back, it said um. They assumed it was so because when animals die, their bodies get cold and they cease to breathe. So their body must have been sustained by warmth and breath. Importantly, the Stoic physics, Numa was mixed in within the body, mixed in with the body. This way they could explain how there could be two bodies in the same spot. Uh, the soul was not only the sustaining cause of all bodies, but it was also guiding the growth and development of bodies that it is contained within. Numa can also consist of various ratios of the active elements and this is the way the stars can account for different qualities of bodies. That's going to be the last document we're going to read. <clears throat> this is uh, www.bizcharts.com. The, the logo is con Continuum. Stoic world, Worldview. I'm going to just write down to the person gets right to the point. It says, For the Stoics, God was fire, active energy, and logos, reason diffused throughout the cosmos. They believed too that the law of nature was God's material presence in the universe. As cosmic reason, God was providence. The pro this providence ordained all things. God was fate too. The story believed fate imposed upon humanity 
asserting determinism that allow for freedom only within the context of the person's inner acceptance of cosmic, of cosmic necessity. These niggas are just fucking out of their mind, man. It sounds like 125th Street. As for fire, uh, those believe in soul even for the animals, though not a rational soul. Remember what last page said they believe because the animals die by turn cold. They lose, they lose the breath. That's the warmth and breath. That's why I said here, the stove believes in soul even for animals. Though not a rational soul and rational creatures, which they ain't, which animals aren't, aren't uh, rational as humans are. That's why this, uh, um, when you when you die, pursuing Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, what happens? Uh, your spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father which gave it. But what happens to an animal spirit? Do animals go before the Most High? No. We got a scripture proof that? Yes. This is the book of um, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, in the 21st verse. I'll start with verse uh, 21. Who knows the spirit of men that goeth upward? Right, man's spirit goes upward. When, you, when we die, our bodies go, uh, our bodies all go um, back into the earth. I'll start with verse 20. All go into one place, all are of the dust, and all turn dust again. So when we die, all our bodies go back into dust. Who knows the spirit of man that goes upward? The spirit of man goes upward before the Heavenly Father. And the spirit of beast that goes downward to the earth. Does it mean they go into hell? No. The spirit of the beast, once the animal die, it don't go before a judgment before the Most High. Or you ate that zebra lion. <laughs> no, that don't happen. The spirit goes right back down <coughs> to the earth into another lion, reincarnated. You know? The spirit is, is, like, is, like, is, a, is like a cycle. Okay? So that proves that right there. So they knew, so they, so they knew that much. That they had spirits and the animals were irrational. Okay? As humans are. So they understood that much. And, and rational creatures, however, they considered the pneuma fiery breath to be manifest at a higher degree of intensity as an emanation from the world soul. This pneuma was a spark of the celestial fire. It says, essentially the stars believe that God is for the world that soul is for man. Remember how we mentioned how they believed that the universe had a body and a soul, the body being nature, the soul being the fire, the spirit, the unit that governed the um, body, just as, our, just as we have physical bodies <coughs> which are governed by our souls. It says, um, the stars believe that what God is for the world, the soul is for man. They declare that the cosmos must be viewed as a single whole, with its variety being referred to various stages of condensation and pneuma. Therefore, the Stoics, the actual nature. Therefore, for the Stoics, the actual nature of human of a human person is universe is a universal on a small scale of microcosm. What is a microcosm? Let's see what that means, real quick. Um, a microcosm. It says um, Greek, etymology, of course, Latin microcosmos from Greek, micros, small. Cosmos world, small world, or miniature world. In other words, in other words, uh, and you go when you type it in on uh, dictionary.com, it says a little world, a world in miniature. Anything that is regarded as a world in miniature. So in other words, in other words, we're like a um, they they say we they say we're like a microcosm. The Stoics, therefore, the Stoics, the actual nature of a human person is the, uni is the universe versal on a small scale microcosm. In other words, the universe itself, but we're like the universe on a small scale. In other words, we're like a little world. You have the whole entire universe. You would call that a macrocosm. Let's look at, let's look at, mac look at macrocosm real quick. You would call it a macrocosm because a macrocosm, when you look it up on um, Merriam Webster, it would say um, a large system that contains many smaller systems. But then we look on the same web page of a, a microcosm. So we know a, a macrocosm is a large system or a great world. So that would be like the universe. But they said we're like the universe but on a small scale. Not a macrocosm, but a microcosm. A smaller version of something larger. Just as how they, the universe had a body and a soul, the body being nature. The soul being the logos or that, or that pneuma, that spirit that governed all things, just as our bodies was, was governed by our um, fiery spirit, our soul. 
So the universe has a body and a soul, and this body is nature governed by a spirit or a pneuma. That would be a macrocosm, but we're like that, but on a small level. We're considered a, ma a microcosm. Our bodies, our spirits to our bodies, what the universe is, spirit is to its body. These niggas, these niggas just pulling shit out their ass. That's how the scriptures tell us what to avoid foolish and profane babblings, man. Right. This is foolishness. It says, um, there is a parallel between the, the macrocosm and the microcosm. God, the soul of the world, fills and penetrates it. Similarly, um, similarly, the human soul pervades and breathes through all the body, informing and guiding it. And both the macrocosm and the microcosm, there is a ruling part. They still consider each human soul a fragment of the universal divine force, yet not completely um, sundered from the parent stock. They were talking about family. They declared that we are thy offspring. I'm going to jump right down to these last, I'm going to just skip the next paragraph. It says, um, the Stoics believe these ethics further into the ideas of community. The individual must realize the society of rational beings of which he is a member and subordinate to his own ends, to the ends and needs of his society. That's basically it. So basically you understand what this verse is talking about now. Act of 17th chapter and 25th verse, I'll read it again and basically um, summarize it. You know, the other brother couldn't make it. You know, he was at work. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was at work. But he couldn't make it. So, uh, Acts 17, 25, Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gave it to all life and breath and all things. The reason why the stories believe that because they believe that the universe was governed by a universal soul, which is what they call pneuma, which means breath. And in the, um, a philosophical sense, it would be like a breath of life. And they believe that that breath was in all things. The universe was a soul. The universe has a soul. And nature was its body. Just as we have bodies and inside of us is a soul. So the universe was governed by this uh, universal soul that they attributed to Zeus. That they called God. And they believe that, believe that that spirit pervaded all things. That spirit was inside of everything. But in reality, it's the Heavenly Father who governs everything. And His spirit pervades all. I Meaning His spirit is what, is what spreads to all. So He giveth truly life breath in all things. Not this fucking Numa Zeus bullshit that these niggas talking about. So basically what the Apostle Paul is doing, he's becoming all things all men. You understand? He's going, he's uh, making mention of their philosophies, but he's showing them how it relates to the truth. Because when you read down on into the chapter, you're gonna, you'll, you'll figure that out. How it says some of them mocked and some of them said we're going to see you again according to this matter. So some of them was able to look and understand what it was that Paul was saying, but some of them wasn't able to get it. But you'll see as we further go on. So with that, um, we're going to close. We're going to say, oh, praise to you, Alba, Shemi, Al Shah, double line to the elders of GMS. Shalom to the brother there, pushing the truth and truth and sincerity, and um, shalom.